MIDI controllers. They are basically paperweights until you plug them in. Then they become super fun instruments for musical expression. Hi, I'm Hugh and thanks for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to do a quick exploration of MIDI controllers. At the start, we'll have a quick look at what MIDI controllers actually are, then we'll move into what the different form factors of MIDI controllers are and what they're actually practically useful for. Then, at the end of this video, we might even speculate a little bit as to what the future of MIDI controllers could look like. So make sure you stay tuned for that. A MIDI controller allows the user to send MIDI data to a computer or to another module. It could be a lighting device or something like this Roland synthesizer here. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface and it's a protocol that allows these new electronic instruments of musical expressions and computers to communicate with each other. As you can see in front of me, MIDI controllers come in a wide variety of form factors, from mixing style controllers through to sequences, and then more traditional approaches to instrumentation like this keyboard-based MIDI controller in front of me. Or something really wild, this is Jazz Mutant's Lima, and you can see there's these little dots bouncing around these XY pads and they can be influenced and programmed by a user to create really interesting sound effects or musical ideas. The form factor of a MIDI controller is really going to influence how the user goes about creating, manipulating and combining sound. And this brings us new forms of music and new forms of musical expression and that's really, really exciting. Well, to me at least. The MIDI controller that is right for you really depends on what it is you want to do and what it is you want to achieve, or how versatile the MIDI controller could actually be. Could it do multiple things? When you boil it down, there are a few basic functions for MIDI controllers. One is to play virtual instruments. Something like this keyboard here could be used to trigger a virtual piano or a virtual um, synthesizer emulation. Having said that, you could also assign these pads to give MIDI commands and these pads could trigger off chords or individual MIDI notes as well and you could in fact play it like a piano. Other MIDI controllers like these ones here might be more focused around mixing and really being able to dissect and massage a sound and do some crazy things too. So I can have different audio clips loaded up here on my APC by Akai and then different filters loaded up here So as you just heard, you can get some really wild things happening. So this MIDI controller here was interfacing with um, Digital Audio Workstation Ableton Live, which is super MIDI controller friendly and really easy to map different forms and functions to. As you may have also noticed, I was able to use this MIDI Fighter Twister by DJ Tech Tools to be able to map uh, beat repeats, filters, and this beautiful redux effect that's in Ableton. I was able to then use the controller to dive into the software and start to play it and manipulate it in real time. Super expressive and super fun. That brings us to another function of MIDI controllers. Because they are so expressive, they are super, super fun and great for improvisation and musical performance. So I've got an Ableton push here, which is designed specifically for the software Ableton Live. And right now I've got a 16th step sequencer loaded up. And this is connected to a drum rack. And then I can start to
and then even play them in live. And if the timing's not quite right, I can quantize that, snap it to the grid, and then I can use another controller to really start messing with the sound. So as you can see by using these tools, I was able to develop a musical idea spontaneously and really, really quickly, and then just start extrapolating on that and seeing where it could go in terms of the sound design and the timbre of that musical idea. The choice of MIDI controller will depend entirely on the musician. A great example I can give you of this is Ableton's Push 2, versus the APC40 Mark II by Akai. Both are specifically designed to interface with Ableton Live, but have vastly different uses and strengths. For example, I see the Push 2 more as an instrument interface. As you can see now, I've got it in this chromatic mode, and each line is set a fourth apart. If I play these straight lines here, start to explore quartal harmony and you get some really interesting ideas straight off the bat there. Here's a tip for young players, add a sustain pedal to your push. and pitch bending piano, unheard of. In the other corner, we've got the APC40 Mark II by Akai. And I find this controller really useful for the live mix, for the dub mix, or for just diving right in and starting to massage a sound and dissect it in a really micro form way. And you start to get really great improvisations and new musical ideas. You could take a song idea, throw it onto the session view so your whole song's sitting there in a non-linear form and then you can start to carve your own and unique and a new journey through that song every time. You can do similar functions on the push. You can see here's my clip mode and then I can go to mix and I can start to mix it live but you've got to go through menus to sort of get there where I find that on the APC40 MK2 everything is there. It's at my fingertips and ready to go. However, the APC40 I find doesn't really have the same sequencing tool. There are scripts so you can sequence for it, but it doesn't have the same instrument playability that I think that the push does, and that is the push's strength, I really do feel. In summary, both controllers are great, and actually if you had both controllers connected to Ableton at the same time, I think you would find yourself with a really powerful setup, being able to mix and carve sound, and then generate sequences on the fly, and then also be able to play instruments on the fly, I think you would have this great workstation, this really great way of interfacing with your software. And that's part, that's all the purpose of it, is to go from idea to actualization as quick as possible. Um, menu diving I find really cripples me and really holds me up. I like to just being able to turn a dial and know that's exactly what it's going to do. So there's no better or worse, there's just different applications for different scenarios. So what is the future of MIDI? Well, even things like AI MIDI, even though that Jazz Mutants Lima has been around for 10 years or more, 
being able to set up instructions and set up ideas that will continue to roll out and then also being able to do MIDI via wireless. There's lots of talk of the MIDI 2.0, which I haven't seen a lot of implementation yet, but that has a more finite range of MIDI instructions at the moment. There's sort of 128 increments of instructions that you can get from a MIDI controller. And I think that the MIDI 2.0 is supposed to have um, like 10 times that amount. So you'll be able to get much more expressive, much more nuanced um, control over your instruments and the expressive nature of your music making. As computers become more powerful, we're starting to see less latency times, but we're also starting to see lots of ideas around this MPE MIDI control. What does MPE stand for? MIDI Polyphonic Expression. And that's the idea that you could get something with a really soft surface like this Rolly light block and then everywhere and every little wiggle will give you a separate MIDI idea. It used to be the case that MIDI controllers, when you would press multiple commands at once, they would give you the same velocity instruction, for example, for all three buttons that I'm pressing now. However, with the introduction of MPE or uh, MIDI polyphonic expression, we're now seeing individual instructions given for each note. And those instructions can come in five forms or five dimensions of MPE. So the five dimensions of MPE are being able to strike. So that first on instruction and the velocity associated with that. Then you've got a press. So after that first instruction is given, you can then dig in a little bit harder. You've then got a vertical glide, which you could attach to a filter or something like that. So still holding the note, then being able to manipulate it further. Then you've also got slide, which you might control pitch with, for example, or a slight little wiggle. And then you've got the lift. And then the a speed that you lift off with will give another MIDI instruction. So I find this really useful for playing things like string instruments, where if you're doing a cello or a violin, for example, uh, being able to dig in a little bit harder after the initial um, starting of the note makes it really, really expressive and really vocal and lyrical in the types of um, musical information that you can give. So expressive. And as they say, one of the most expressive musical instruments is the voice. And uh, I think we're starting to get closer and closer in terms of expressive capabilities of digital instructions. I'm always curious about these custom setups. So make sure you leave a comment below, whether it's a video or, or just tell us about how you're implementing MIDI controllers in your live setup or in your studio. One thing I find about MIDI controllers is on stage, taking a computer on stage can be nerve wracking. Um, I found particularly with Macs, overheating is a massive issue and having to sit the computer on bags of ice to get through a show uh, is not exactly ideal. Or even putting the computer into the pub fridge to cool down for 20 minutes before a show. So hopefully it will remain at a low temperature to get you through that set. Uh, it's really scary. So I think what we'll see from MIDI controllers is that as the technology continues to advance, they'll just become more expressive, lower latency, more flexible, being able to uh, have more wireless control and, um, and just way more nuanced and more and more expressive. I think I've already said that and that's what they're there for. It's to really go from the imagination to actualization and speed up that process in your workflow. Look, I'm Hugh. I hope you enjoyed this video and like always, happy music making. Thank you.